Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com That's my television making a weird noise uh, Okay, yeah, my name's Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep Number 111, I think. I'm currently uploading the Let Me Boy to Sleep 110 from two days ago. But there's been a backlog of videos I've been producing. So it's, uh, I did a, a balloon phobia video. And I don't know why, but it took forever to to um, produce on video, you know, to, on the editing software, to render it, basically. Once it's edited, it goes through a process called rendering, and it lasts. This one lasted for probably a good uh, 12 hours, if not more. And then to upload it lasted another, I don't know, three hours. During that time, I rendered the, oh God, this is, this is too boring for me. I can't, I can't finish it. Sorry. <laughs> this is too boring. <laughs> it's, that's my squeaky chair. I'm struggling with talking about rendering audios, uh, videos rather. Oh, really boring. So, th the idea behind these recordings, and actually, if you do get a chance, That's Andre now, he's going to be making noise. If you do get a chance to listen to yesterday's or the 10th or the 11th or whatever day it was, the Let Me Boy to Sleep 110, I practically fell asleep doing it. I did, really. I was like, uh, and I was thinking, what did I just say? So near the end, I was falling asleep. Andre's just, oh, he winds me up. I didn't take him out for a walk today, so he's got the ump with me. When I was in the toilet earlier, and he did something that he hasn't done for a long, well, I can't remember the last time he did it. I went to open the door after I'd finished, and he'd ripped all the carpet up. You know, he's just like, oh, Why? I sit him down sometimes and I say, Andre, why do you do this stuff? And you only just says, because I'm a ferret. That's what ferrets do. So, but why can't you be different? Why can't you act differently? And he said, yeah, but you don't like it when people on Facebook expect you to act differently to who you are. Yeah, I know. So why should I act differently to who I am? I'm a ferret. Yeah. And you're someone that says silly stuff. Yeah. Well, when you stop saying silly stuff, I'll stop acting like a ferret. Okay. No. I'm the boss. I'm in charge. Well, when you start taking yourself seriously, then I'll start thinking about stop being ferrety. Isn't it a weird thing that taking yourself seriously thing I do that sometimes 
and I wonder why why did I just do that that was a bit silly I'm going to chuck him out the window in a minute he won't just eat the stuff out of the bowl what he's doing is he's finding bits of food that he has left on the carpet to, to stick to the carpet and now he's ripping it off the carpet and make just seriously if he had a drum set he would be setting it up right now it's just completely out to get out to get me <laughs> he is he's out to get me hear him that's him it's not me it's him I'll put him to bed soon but can't do it while I'm doing this so what I'll do is I'll do this and then by the time I finish this I bet you he'll have gone back to his bed or gone back to his, his bag and gone to sleep and then I'll pick up his bag and say it's time for bed and he'll be saying but why daddy I've been really good yeah for the last four minutes oh I'll be going to bed myself as well. I need to, I've got some stuff I need to do tomorrow. I'm gonna. A main thing. Oh, I don't know. I'm trying to get out more. I'm trying to get out more. My uh, went to the psychiatrist, and the psychiatrist said, uh, "Just said you need to get out more, JJ." I said, okay, but do you need to put your hand on my knee when you told me this? <laughs> he said, he didn't, he didn't know. He didn't have his hand on my knee. He didn't. Not my knee. No, he didn't. He was the other side of the room. Imagine if he did, though. He'd be like Mr. Tickle from the books, you know? Big long arms. Wee! Tickle, 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 tickle. Yeah. There's a fine line, isn't it, between tickling and assault. There's this fine, fine, fine line. Depends, I suppose, where you are. If you're at work, if you're at church, if you're at school, if you're in a swimming bath, you know, a swimming pool, helping someone out of the maybe struggling to get maybe they're slipping on the stairs you know the you know, what are they called the like the stair thing at the corner of the of the swimming pool to get out of the water maybe they're slipping and you help them out but maybe you decide to give them a little tickle instead <laughs> yeah, see it's, it's a fine line <laughs> fine line but you know that's how I met my girlfriend yeah, I thought she was just another pensioner, but no. Turned out that she was the love of my life for a little while, anyway. So <laughs> I think too much seriousness. So maybe that could get in the way of being able to sleep. Because if you're taking yourself seriously during the day, chances are that person may be taking themselves seriously at night. I don't know. Maybe, oh, maybe some people are just like drama. That's drama to the rest of us. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe some people just... Because there's something to be said for that. You release... It's... With adults. Okay, with children. There's a film called Play Therapy. And what you have... I'm a therapist, you know. I know, I know about this stuff. And uh, Andre's climbed on me. and now sniffing my balls. Which is lovely. Thank you, mate. You know how much that cost me to, if 
I had to pay a human to do that. Oh, I love you, baby. I love you. Now sniff my balls. Oh, no. He just loves horrible smells. His dream, if he could get himself, if he could get down the drain, he would. That's his dream. If he could get him, if I could take him somewhere like a sewage, he would love that. That would be like uh, Willy Wonka's chocolate factory to him. The sewage, like all that waste, that human waste. Oh, he'd be like dribbling. You'd be so excited, wouldn't you? He's yawning at me. Don't take the piss. You're not tired. I'll take my glasses off so I can see him. You got your little tongue out. You, you're a wind-up merchant, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are, your little tongue out like that. And it's your heart. Are you hot? Do you want to rub noses? <coughs> you have to behave yourself. When I'm doing a recording, it'd be nice if you could keep quiet just for, just for that time. It's only for an hour at the most. It's not like I'm asking you to be quiet for an hour and 20 minutes. Hey? Eh? You hear him sniffing. Do what me do what me be me 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 mo me mo me mo me. Well, he's laying on me and he's not moving for some reason. So hey, he clearly wants my attention. But we're not going out. Oh, didn't like that. He's, he's off. Oh. Okay, okay, see you then. Let's now go and have some water. It's quite weird because he has a water. I've got this big blue bowl that I put out. It's basically a cat litter box. Uh, but I don't own a cat, so I bought it new. And don't don't, don't tell him that it's for cats to shit in because he might get upset. Um, but he, I put it water in it, and he drinks out of it. But he also dips his chin into the water and moves it around so the water is just its whole chin is like a beard of, <laughs> of water it's very cute so what was I saying I was talking about something but I forget what it was oh yeah taking ourselves oh play therapy so with play therapy a child uh, you've he ever heard the expression, Tommy, use your words, you know, from a parent. Um, Tommy, use your words. If you don't, you're going to go to the naughty step. And it sounds, I always think it sounds funny when I hear that, but there's so much in it. It's, it's like, wow, yeah. So basically, instead of the kids stomping up and down and turn into like a miniature Hulk, so it's okay. I'll use my words. I am not happy with your decision. I'm not happy with your breakfast. <laughs> You're the breakfast cereal you chose to buy. It made me feel very, very disappointed. So, 
with kids in therapy, we've got play therapy, and they can kind of reenact stuff. Maybe reenact a a scenario that might have happened in their you know, at home or or they might it's it's like a way of them releasing the energy, the anger, the frustration, but using like dolls instead of actually physically doing it with another person. See adults sometimes seem to just do the equivalent of that, the equivalent but with other people. So they'll take it out on the wrong people. So they're frustrated about something else, but then they'll take it out on someone that isn't to blame for their situation or for what they're feeling. And so it's kind of very childlike behaviour, but they're not... And we all do it at times, I know I do. Sometimes I have to... I enjoy doing it if I can. I don't at all, I'm just making it up. But so it kind of just shows that in some ways little kids are way more advanced than adults in some ways because you imagine being in your 40s plus and aiming hostility towards another person who isn't responsible for how you feel it's it's a shame isn't it but you know I think something I realised years ago years ago I have to remind myself of it sometimes is that the only reason people are being arseholes is because they're hurting. Arseholes are in <laughs> arseholes are in pain. It's true though. People that are complete knobheads are generally they're hurting. They're not they're not happy. So I shouted at an ambulance the other day. It's making too much noise. Honestly, I went to the garage. I didn't shout at the ambulance driver, just the actual vehicle. But I went to the garage, my local garage, and it was closed again for the second time because they've got a sandwich delivery. And they close to put the sandwiches out. Except I don't have enough staff to actually do the job to keep the business running there's clearly not enough money in petrol anymore in selling petrol I thought it was quite a lucrative business to be in so the first time it happened about three weeks ago I was knocking on the door the person inside said we're closed I said you know, open up then they said, no, we closed. I said, well, just let me in. And uh, it was one of those like, non-win situations for me because I, I was saying, well, why are you closed? Because I couldn't understand it. I was just like, I couldn't, I've never known anything like that to happen before. Like it's it's never been closed before ever since I've lived here, and I've never known a garage to just be closed and have all the lights on and have staff in there. It's like, is, are they are they being robbed? Or what what's going on? I you know so, and the bloke inside said, "It's nothing to do with you. Why we're we closed." I don't have to tell you why. I was like, oh, if I could put my hand through this glass. I was like, oh, oh I wish I could tickle him. 
Give me a big old tickle, big old hug. It's like how oh, it was just so my concern changed from concern to uh, mild frustration possibly and I then left and I had to walk to the shop I think and I only go to the garage when I need something I don't go there to for the scenic view I don't go there because I enjoy the company of the staff I go there because it's something I need and I just uh, anyway I decided if it happened again and they had these cordons you know the orange uh, I don't know what they call them the, uh, traffic traffic cones that they'd put in the entrance three to stop the cars coming in and I thought if they do this again I'm going to remove those traffic cones chuck them in a ditch and let all the cars come in and fill up with petrol and see how they like it you know let, let them be let let the person inside the garage deal with that but I thought no next time if it happens again and I forgot about it it hasn't happened for about three weeks and you know I let it go kind of and then it happened again on Friday I think it was Friday yeah it would have been Friday about half five and again I just walked in I didn't notice the cord the uh, traffic cones up the other side because I just walked in noticed there was no car. I didn't even notice there was no cars just walked in all the lights were on as normal pushed the door didn't open this time there was no one in there couldn't see anybody And all I wanted to do, apart from um, I don't know, redecorate the garage, but apart from that, what I wanted to do is to move the cordons, move the the the, the traffic cones, chuck them in the ditch, or just move them, just move. Them. I've got to chuck them in a the ditch, but places full of ditches everywhere. So I just push them away, so all the traffic can come in, get their petrol and then walk up to the garage and they can't get in start banging on the window and just to see the person saying no we're closed it, you know just just I probably wouldn't stick around to watch it but it just I don't know part of that feels right but I know it's kind of not I suppose but I didn't I didn't do it but I was walking away this time I had to walk all the way up to a shop because there's something I needed to get which meant that's another hour of my time and it was raining and it was windy and it was cold and every time a car were lawyering past I was getting covered in water from the you know the gutter and I had Andre with me and he was being a pain as well you know he didn't want to be in his bag he wanted to walk uh, it was very so I was just <laughs> it, yeah it was, I think at one point I got sprayed by a, a van so I shouted something at the van probably and then there was an ambulance and I shouted an ambulance <laughs> uh, so I think I'm now turning into that crazy shouty person that Every t every town has one, don't they? Where there's some at least one person walks down this road shouting at cars and just you know what I mean, just a little bit um, uh, not in touch with reality, possibly. And I thought, oh, I want to shout at least one more one more time. I didn't, but I wanted to. So what I really need to do is to go into the go into a 
I don't know, somewhere where there's no one around and just have a good old yell. That's all it was, just to let out some of that energy. Eventually I got back. I went to the shop, got what I needed. The bloke behind the counter was... It wasn't rude, but it was cold. I like really just uninterested. I don't want people, I don't expect people to ask to see a family album when I go in there. You know, oh, have you got any pictures of you when you was a kid? A bit weird. No, I mean, just generally, you know, just maybe kids of you, were you at Christmas, maybe your first bike, uh, you know, maybe, you know, when you were early 20s, perhaps the first or second girlfriend. Uh, you ever been, ever been, uh, you know, married or, uh, you know, had any kids or anything? I said, no, no, just, you know, I didn't want that. I don't want that. You know, I don't expect the person behind the counter uh, I don't know I don't expect them to invite me home for dinner do you want to come home for Christmas you know not Christmas dinner for, you want to come home for Sunday lunch my mum makes a very good very good roast potato very good yeah we can all make roast potatoes they're just it's quite easy no she makes really nice ones yeah lot, lots of people do they're not that difficult. Well, can you make nice roast potatoes? I said, no, but that's not the point. It's, you know, if I wanted to, I could. Just like if I wanted to pilot a plane, I could. I would just have to learn how to do it. I can't drive a car, but if I wanted to, I could learn. Do you, do you understand? He said, yeah, well, that's a bit of rude. I invited you around for lunch because I thought you were nice. That lovely smile of yours and that. I just like the idea of looking over across the table and seeing bits of my mother's roast potato hanging from your beard. Mmm. That's just... I didn't want that. But at the same time, I didn't want the coldness that's so felt. It's like, there's your bag there, bye. That was it. It's like, oh. I didn't want to cuddle. I didn't want to cuddle. Although I could probably have used a cuddle, generally, you know, the way I was feeling. But just a little bit of, oh, be cold. It's got to be difficult, though, working, doing something you don't, you know, if someone doesn't like doing, I suppose. I wonder if he's into drama. I don't know. So it's been a, it's been a weird day, a lot of day to day. All I've done is sleep. <sighs> I had no problem sleeping today. Most of it's been just in my big black squeaky chair. I've just been laying, lying down on it, lying down, lying back in it, on it, with it, on it, together with it, loving it. And just uh, maybe listening to the radio or maybe just listening to the wind. It's been, it's been that nice level of wind where I can just sit here and be relaxed, listen to the wind. You know, you can hear it outside. I've got, I've got the windows open slightly. So it's a nice sound. So it's a relaxing level. It's not at the level when, you know, sometimes it's really, it's really strong and Although I still like it when it's strong, there's still that little bit of a concern that a tree outside might fall down and crash through the, into my home. So that's less relaxing than the um, just the mild wind. It's it's just it's more smoother, more. 
I don't know, I quite like it. I quite like Wither. It's about as mundane as saying, I like to laugh, I do, I like to laugh. Yeah, I think we all like to laugh. I don't think anyone's laughed and thought, oh, that was horrible. I don't want to do that again. Please don't ever make me laugh again. That felt awful. Ooh, all wrong. Oh, ever so. Ooh. No, it probably never happened. So, I've got a couple of donations. It's not really donations, you know, in a sense of a couple of people that appreciate what I do send me some money. Uh, just kindness gave me a present, gave me a gift. Because uh, it's not earnings, I've not done a job and collected money, I've not worked for it, apart from the last 13 years, but you know, it's, uh, I'm not a charity, I'm not a, I'm not a business, I'm nothing, I'm just a person attempting to do something a little bit different. A little, little bit different. And I was thinking today, thinking today that maybe it's time I look for a job. Um, it's probably not time because I've only just started going out and can't say that I'm enjoying every experience of getting on the bus during the day but I don't know I'm thinking maybe it's time to focus elsewhere possibly so yeah I'm going to see what happens I'm not sure what's going to happen but I'm just Over the next week, I'm going to just put some feelers out. I do have a tendency, though, in the past, when I've made a decision to get a new job, you know, maybe to leave the job I'm at or uh, whatever it is, when I kind of really, really make that decision, then things start to move quite quickly. And I usually have a job within a week or two. You know, I move and I get it done. So, the thing is, I've done a lot of... Well, most of the jobs I've had, apart from counselling and, you know, the therapy stuff, has been working in call centres. And I... I don't mind call centres actually. There's there's aspects of it that I'm not crazy about. Um, but I think with call centres, the the best and worst parts of the job is the same thing, and that's the people. Uh, you know, I think it can be the best and worst, depending on what mood I'm in and depending on what what kind of people, because there's so many different people that realistically you can't get on with everyone or you're not going to enjoy the company of everybody that's just standard human thing you know you can't you're not going to enjoy smelling every fart that's presented to you you know it's just generally even if your own you're not even going to enjoy every fart of your own not everyone smell not every every single one smells nice there are going to be the odd ones you think, oh God, that's, that's, there's someone else living up there. There really is. That's, that's not one of mine. So, but then you've got the other side, which is the, when I've worked in call centres, there's always some really nice people that I get on with. I get on generally with most people. And, 
So that's, I'll have a look. The problem is that I live in an area where there's not many call centers. But it's a train journey away, 20 minutes on a train, and I'm at a place where there is lots of call center jobs. But that 20 minute journey is gonna be an hour journey with the getting to the train station and then getting from the train station to the job. So that's a two hours a day added on to the 40 hours a week. So what's that? Two, four, six, eight, ten. So that'll be a 50 hour week instead of a 40 hour week. Or a 47 and a half hour week instead of a 37. That's a lot of hours added on really. So I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure. But then I suppose realistically, if I was to get a job in the town I live, it would also be a journey. It would be probably nearly an hour to get there and an hour back. So yeah, it's probably not going to be that much difference to be fair because from where I live, it's about 20 minute walk to the train station. And it's 20 minutes to the town, the next town. And then I'm guessing another 20 minutes, 10, 15 minutes uh, to, if it's central to the office. So yeah, we'll just see, maybe. Because if I open up the possibilities of going to the other town, which is where I used to work, there'll be a lot more possibilities, I think. A lot more options, a lot, a lot more positions available. So it might be easier for me. I don't know. I'm not sure. The thing is, I'm 48 now, and what is a 38? 48. When I think it was two days ago, or it might have been three days ago. Might have been Friday or even Thursday, but I think it, pretty sure it was Saturday. Or what is it now, Sunday? No, it wasn't yesterday. It was probably, might have been Wednesday even. But I went online, went to the government website to find out when I can officially retire. So I put in my date of birth and What year was it? I think it's... 2038 is when I can retire. So it's 19 years. I think it's something like that. And then they said... Well, actually, it might be long. It might have to. It might be more than that, because we've not. Apparently, every year they correct it. Every year they change it. Uh, so they might decide to add another year to it. I mean, when I worked, when I first started working, the retirement age was sixty-five for a man. Possibly possibly less than that it might have been 60 for a man but I think it was 65 for a man and for a woman I think it was 60 very sexist isn't it yeah especially as women statistically live longer than men so you think it would be the other way around that men would retire earlier than women 
based on that. But we're supposed to add logic into politics. And uh, because let's face it, the people that make these rules up, they're biased. Everyone, we're all biased towards what we want. We're biased towards what we think is a good idea. So whoever made that rule up, whoever kind of, they would have fought for it because they liked that idea. For whatever reason. And maybe it was a woman that made the idea up and she wanted to make sure that all her female brethren get to retire earlier than men. Who knows? Maybe it was a man and he didn't like the idea that women were working. So he forced them to stop working earlier. Who knows? I could research, but I don't care enough about it. It's a little bit like electricity. I click the switch, the light comes on. That's all I want to know. Not interested in anything else to do with it. I think life should be like that. I want everything to be like that. I do. I want to be able to go to sleep. I'll just lay down on on this chair. Drift off to sleep. And then in an hour's time, kind of just wake up and my toenails have been cut. And it's all, you know, they're all nice and pampered. Or maybe you have a little another little snooze and you know, wake up and there's a nice hot meal next to me. Just at the right time when I'm hungry. And someone can just feed me. <laughs> Basically, I want to live in a an old people's home. I want to be a residential. I want to be an old person, like really old. I don't really, but... There's this laziness that I have. It's not laziness as in not wanting to work. It's... It's a laziness as in not wanting to do anything for myself sometimes. I want someone to wash me. I want someone to run the bath for me. I want someone to dry me off. <laughs> or <laughs> when I've had a bath, it maybe to wash my hair and to scrub my back, you know, stuff like that. But I want to be able to stand up and have someone wrap me in a towel and maybe have a smaller towel for my hair. So yeah, I basically, God, I think I need to be babied. (laughs) I don't know. I think it'd just be nice to be pampered. I did, I had this girlfriend once, honest, I did. And uh, I'd forget her name. But she, she was in the bath. And she got in the bath. And it was at that, it was that point in the relationship where the, it wasn't that the spark was no longer there, but we were like maybe three weeks in. It wasn't as new or fresh as it had been, you know. And she was in the bath I was watching EastEnders on telly and and uh, she said JJ so I turned the telly up and uh, eventually you know I couldn't she was shouting so loudly I couldn't pretend to not hear her so I went in there and said yes Says, can you can you wash my hair, please? I said, why well, someone cut your hands off? She said, what? 
She said, well, where, where she, you still got your hands? She said, yeah. I can't believe she actually held her hands up. I said, look. And I realised I was getting nowhere with that one, so I thought, okay. And uh, so I put the, put the, I think her hair was wet. And I don't think I've ever washed anyone's hair before, apart from my own. I don't know if, because my brothers, we used to have baths together sometimes. Um, when we were, you know, tiny, it's like, even then I think usually we used to have a bath on our own, but might have like washed each other's hair, I don't know, but, no, I don't know. I f oh, I'm not sure. I don't think I've ever washed a, a woman's hair. But anyway, her hair was like a scowler, you know, one of those, sc <laughs> you know the things you use for, you know, you get a saucepan that hasn't been, basically it's like it's been, you cook something in it, whatever you cooked is burnt and you decided just to leave it on the cooker for about two months. Haven't bothered put any water into what you know to rinse, you know, to soak it or anything, just left it. So you need a scourer to try and get rid of some of that burnt burntedness off of it. I'm not saying that's what a hair was like, I'm just saying it wasn't, it was just it was it was um Yeah, it was fine, perf lovely hair. It was nice. Um, but anyway, I put the water on her. Yeah, I think I poured some water on her head. And I actually, she didn't realise that I was pretending to baptise her. I was pretending to be a priest. I thought, oh, this is good. What you need is a saucepan and a bath. Because I had a saucepan. It wasn't a saucepan that was burnt. It was a different saucepan. And then I sort of was rubbing shampoo into her hair. And it just, yeah, I think she just rinsed it off, I think, and she said that I wasn't very sensual. I said, what do you mean? She said, you know, washing the person, was it washing the person, washing person you love's hair is a sign of love, a sign of care and a sign of intimacy. And I said, yeah, but EastEnders is on. So washing your hair is really a sign of interruption. It's a sign of annoyance. It's a sign of me not seeing the end of the television program that I was watching. Do you, do you understand? And she said, no, you should put put me before a television program. And I thought, oh, I'm not going to win this argument. So I better not. I better stop before it starts. And so I'm sure there's more to that. But I, yeah, I washed her hair and She actually had brown hair when I met her. And I think I saw her a couple of times, dated, went out for a date two or three times, four times, five times or something. And then one day she turns up and she's got bright red hair. I think that's a bit rude. It's just bright red hair. Or was it red ginger? But it was but it was it was a completely different colour hair to what she had. And I know it's her hair and she's got every right to um look like a clown if she wants, but 
I was just a bit, ooh. You know, I could feel my retinas burning. I could just, it was a bit too bright. And luckily I had a blindfold, so I put that on. But it was just, what? What? On, but she didn't acknowledge it. It was like just, like it was just another, you know, nothing, nothing new. Excuse me. Excuse me. I've been learning um, Romanian. And so far, the word yes is da. I'll keep you updated on my progress. So, she had this really bright hair. So I'm... I don't know if it is. Uh, maybe it's change. Maybe, maybe, maybe I struggle with change. I don't know. A little bit, possibly. But I think if she'd have turned up with I don't know. I think if she'd have turned up with a picture of Beyonce. Or a tattoo of Beyonce on her forehead. I'd have had the same reaction. So, you know, it was like, oh, that's interesting. That's new. Yeah. I don't know. Strange old things, isn't it? Love. <laughs> Love. Love. So this next week, I'm going to be looking at making a few changes I joined the gym but not been yet if I haven't been in the next two weeks I'm going to have to cancel that because that's 13, 14 pound a month that I can't be wasting or not doing it you know, not going Kind of strange. So what are we now in March 2019? It's just really weird just to think back to 1999. March 1999. March 97. Right, I was so twenty two years ago, March ninety seven, I was working, I was doing security, and I don't know what month of the year, I had a girlfriend as well, I think, at the time, and then. I was living with my friend and then March to no March nineteen ninety eight. Yeah, March nineteen eighty ninety eight I was probably starting to learn NLP and I've just started to learn you know 1998 I just got my first two books on hypnosis 
So I probably was reading about hypnosis for the first time, learning a little bit, not really understanding it, not really realising I was ever going to really ever understand it, really. And I end up just doing some kind of boring stuff in 20 years' time. And... 1999, yeah, so 19, so this March 1999, I was, if I remember rightly, doing the Master Practitioner in NLP. Yeah, I was, I was doing the Master Practitioner in NLP. March 1999 I'd have to look at the certificate which is hidden away somewhere so that's 20 years ago and I did my first hypnosis course in April or May 2000 no 1999 and that was like a standalone uh Full on hypnosis course, proper uh, intensive. I think it was like seven days intensive course. I've done other courses as well, but that was the first. I include NLP includes hypnosis; it's all part of it. But the course I did in hypnosis was like proper, full on, full on. That's brilliant. And yeah, wow. So 20 years ago, things were pretty good for me. Yeah, things were pretty good. I was doing what I wanted to do for the first time in a long time. And I was learning new things, learning about hypnosis and learning about not knowing what I was going to do with it, but you know, just getting that initial excitement, you know, of it still, even you know, after a year and over a year. Of doing it and yeah but not knowing where it was going to lead and here I am now and this is where it led wow (laughs) who'd have thought that I reckon if my trainers could see what I'm getting up to they'd probably give me a refund from the training that is not what we taught you so that's the end I think of this thing so I wish you well and goodbye